The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to this uh, Advice Cloud Plan Your 2024 Framework Pipeline webinar. Uh, my name is Chris Farley. I'm the founder and CEO of Advice Cloud, and I'm delighted to welcome you all this morning. We've got something near approaching 200 people registered for this one, so it's not a bad one for everyone as we're mid G Cloud. So uh, thank you very much for anyone who's here. Um, a small amount of housekeeping before we crack on. Um, this is being recorded and uh, we will send the slides and the recording round um, ideally before we break for the bank holiday. These are so some point tomorrow. Uh, there's a section for questions at the end. Please use the questions box in your sidebar to ask questions. Don't use the chat if you can. Um, and uh, we will then endeavour to answer them at the end of the webinar. Any that we can't, we will try to answer them as best we can and send them out when we send the recording and things out as well. Um, I think that's about it. Everybody will be muted on this. So, uh, you know, we've only got half an hour this morning, so I'm going to be really rattling through stuff. It's our new short format webinar. Things that we thought have been very, very successful so far. So uh, without further ado, let's crack on. And I just need to crack on. There we go. So for those who've never been on one of our webinars before, quick one who are advice club, we are what we consider GovTech viability mentors, the only world's only GovTech viability mentors. What that means is that we are public sector procurement experts, especially focused around G Cloud and DOS, plus bunches of other crowd commercial other frameworks. We are relatively unique and we work with suppliers and buyers. We only focus on the tech and digital space, and only focus on UK Gov. We were founded in 2014 and uh, over so far, in fact, that's that's gone up way up. So over a billion, a billion and a half pounds now, uh, community of business one, one by clients across all frameworks. And, uh, you know, 70 uh, percent of our supply, our, our clients um, are SMEs. So we're very, very passionate about working with SMEs. We do work with some household names and some of the bigger organizations on the planet. We can't, can't avoid them. But our passion really is to work with SMEs and helping them be successful in the UK public sector market. Uh, what we cover here today, so it is a bit of a year for procurement-wise, so 2024. There's a, I'll put some updates, what's on the horizon, what supplies should we be doing now, how we can help. And you know, there'll be a bunch of polls taken through here as well, because it helps us change the temperature of the room to see where we're at, so we can maybe make, make um, changes, but also help us in our feedback and the stuff that we send out to you further on. So first poll, Danny, I'm maybe assisted by my, my uh, excellent procurement marketing lead, Danny. So Danny, if you wouldn't mind running the first poll, please. Uh, so if you could select on the following, um, are you currently listed on any frameworks? Uh, yes, we're on multiple routes to market. Just the one. No, we're not listed any. We don't know where to start. That'll be great. Um, currently 70% of you voted. Anyone from Advice Cloud on here, or usually some team members, um, please don't vote if you don't mind. Heading up towards 80% now. Give it another few seconds and then we'll close that. Okay, I think we've got there, Danny. If you mind closing that and before I show the um, results, that would be great. So we've got there. Okay, a good 80% of you are on frameworks with quite a lot of your multiple ones um, and 20% are not this are any. So, uh, and very pleased to see that no one doesn't know where to start. So obviously you've been, you've been attending our, uh, our webinars and know all about the stuff that we do. So if we close that and we'll crack on. Thanks very much. So as we said, 2024 is a very big year for procurement, but why is it such a big deal? What's going on? So, excuse me. So, excuse me a second. Um, there's a range of frameworks opening up for applications. We've actually been calling it Framework Mageddon 2024 because there is a bunch of them opening up that all have an element of tech and digital in them. Um, the Procurement Act as well, um, which is transforming the way that the UK goes and goes about buying its goods and services, goods, services and works, will go live in October 2024. And we're just waiting for the um, second legislation to move into um, final statute now. Uh, it's been announced, uh, I think, yesterday, what is going to be in um, the second legislation and what they're going to be asking for. So that's some good, some good information to be had around that. Um, I mean, last year, a bit of a mixed bag of delays in areas, especially for SMEs. We're hoping to see it change in 2024. Lots of frameworks get pushed. Uh, you know, we were expecting G Cloud out last year and it's out this year, which means another two years. Um, you know, we really are calling it a year of the opening doors um, uh, and you know, some of these frameworks are going to be run under the new procurement rules. 
uh, you know, some of them will be, you could find yourself being locked out for quite some time. Um, some of them are actually being run under the old procurement rules, which could mean a good four year lockout. Um, and, you know, it, it doesn't actually end this year. As we move into 2025, there's more. Sorry, bear with me. I'm just trying to push on there. So what is the Procurement Act? Well, this has been floated around for a while now. Um, it's a new way of doing procurement in the UK. We, we, it's taken quite a few years to get through. Um, it's taking away, still based around, you know, a lot of stuff that we had when we were members of the EU, um, but trying to make it much more, um, less prescriptive, I think, is giving procurement and buyers a lot more leeway to be able to do stuff. So simpler, more flexible, effective procurement, there's specific legislation again calling out stuff for SMEs and social enterprises. We're hoping we'll see this happen. Um, you know, there's a lot of Crown Commercial Services frameworks seem to be at odds with that at the moment. Whether that's just the current leadership thing, we don't know. Or, but you know, certainly in the past two years, we've seen some pretty SME unfriendly frameworks come in. And you know, a lot of if you subscribe to any of the um, data providers, especially Tussle. They will show you um, where the SME friendly frameworks are, and we can say call them out as G Cloud and DOS. Basically, the rest are not that friendly, but you know there's still business going through them. Um, you know, there's tougher action on performing suppliers. Things that you know we've all seen the stuff around Horizon and Fujitsu, what's happening with them. Hopefully, it's going to be there's, there's going to be much more holding the failure the failures of big big IT holding to account. We're always up for more transparency. It's one of the things that G Cloud and DOS are brilliant about. Um, so hopefully a lot more scrutiny and be able to see what's been spent through these rather than just people buyers paying lip service to publishing that information. Uh, and, you know, there's more information for in innovation and flexibility while staying compliant. So, you know, simplification of the rules and regs, uh, making it much more transparent and open and hopefully um, for more opportunities for SMEs and especially for social enterprises as well. So again, another poll, please, Danny. Oh, that me pushing on. Sorry, oh, let's go back. Okay. So the poll, if you wouldn't mind publishing that, is there? So we've got that. Yes, uh, it's the. Um, so we just get some details of that coming through in a second. Yeah, we've got seventy percent have voted so far. Eighty percent. Give it a few more seconds. Okay, let's close that and put up the responses, please, Danny. There's eighty-six percent of voted now. So the poll was: Do you feel confident about your plans for twenty twenty-four? Uh, Sixteen percent of you have a yes, have a strategy in place. Um, Sixty-three percent roughly know what you're doing this year. Well, hopefully, again, out of, the, out of this webinar, you'll find some more information. No, we don't have anything in place, and the two percent you don't know where to start again. Okay. Hopefully this will give you at least a place to start. If you don't, then you know, always can give us a call or book a call with us to, to talk through what you need to know. If you close that down, we'll crack on some more. Bear with. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm going backwards here. I'm going to the wrong button. So what is on the horizon? What is the key routes to market? That's what this is really all about, this, 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 this webinar. So let me do that. So first of all, we're going to do these in date order as they're happening, okay? So G Cloud 14, it is now open for any of you that aren't, aren't aware it's open. I had a call this morning, someone wasn't aware. It's been open since mid-Feb. Um, you know, there are four lots since G Cloud 13, which is cloud hosting, cloud software, cloud support, and lot four, which is the end-to-end -end cloud services. Um, lot four closes today. Um, we have a large number of people that we're submitting for that and got a very successful round last time. We've got eight on them last time. We've got 10 or 12 going through this round. Um, it's still capped at 40 suppliers. Um, uh, and yeah, and lots one to three close on 7th of May. Just a quick tip on that. Don't do anything on the last day of submission. All right. Um, there have been issues with the digital marketplace. Um, everyone trying to bundle on and submit stuff then. And it has fallen over and some people haven't been able to make it back on. So I would strongly recommend that you, um, that you do everything before the 7th of May. Of course, you can use us and we'll get that one you guaranteed to get you on. Um, most of the issues of application uh, have been sorted now. Um, we did a lot of work um, working with the SME Crown Rep and also um, thanks to the Minister for SMEs um, for actually helping persuade Crown Commercial to reduce their, um, their £10 million liabilities that they introduced, which were 
completely out of um, out of kilter for you know for what the framework's about. Um, you know, I, I, as I say, if you supply cloud hosting software or cloud support, then you really do need to be on this. It's going to be, um, I think it's got an eighteen month window, the possible optional six months extension. So, but usually they take that extension. So you're looking between eighteen months to two years if you miss this one. Um, and you know, there's some there's some changes in the questionnaire that reflect the uh, procurement act changes around new financial criteria and things like that. But ultimately, this is being run under the old regulations. Um, so you know, there will not be it's not being run as an open framework where you can um, have new um, suppliers apply at certain times. What's next? So it's closely followed hot on the heels of G Cloud closing will be the next round of digital capability for health. Um, which is a very busy framework. I think it's had about a billion pounds go through it so far. Uh, it's opening on the 15th of May. Uh, it's a single lot framework and you have to meet all the capabilities. Uh, and it's from application dev management ser managed services and um, certainly DevOps, things like that. There's a whole bunch of ISOs, NHS GDS standards, Cyber Essentials Plus required. I think you're going to need to have um, health, they're debating whether to have healthcare related um, uh, certificates of past performance at the moment. Um, given that the, it was only um, it was capped to 12 suppliers last time, but one of those suppliers was acquired or left was acquired or left the framework, went bust, I think it was, I can't remember who it was. Um, and there's just 11 suppliers now, of which there were only three new entrants last time around. And we're quite pleased to say that two of those new entrants were our clients that we got on. There is a plan to expand that out, um, but it's going to be up to about 20 as far as we know. So it's not that it's going to be extremely co um, competitive. And there are a number of very large organizations that were planning to get on that framework and didn't. And uh, what a shame, uh, certainly for one of them. Um, so that one, again, we are we have our, a couple of spaces free for that. Um, but, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely on a first come first serve for that one. Um, and if you are supplying any of those types of services into digital capability health, it is going to be a busy year for them. And it's definitely one that's on their approved, the NHS England's new approved list of frameworks that they have. After that, we are looking at back office software, another crowd commercial services one uh, for software subscription support, mainly based around ERP, CRM, um, you know, uh, that, that type of um, HR applications, those sort of things. It's for say software subscription support, either direct from the vendor for the back office functions, um, and it can be cloud, on-premise or hybrid. Um, if you have a, um, a specific style of implementation of those things, they can be on there as well. And there are associated services where applicable, again, about a billion pounds went through back office software. So you're thinking of stuff like um, Oracle, Salesforce, things like that. These are the sort of places where these are, going, these are being bought. There are only 31 suppliers on the current iteration, so it is quite competitive to get on. Um, and, you know, we've had no big use yet. Um, the last of our engagement was in January, and there's nothing yet scheduled just yet to come out. So we're waiting on that to see what happens, but it is due to open in July 24. Uh, this is quite a big one at the moment. It's causing lots of consternation around the um, SME campfire, MCF4. Uh, applications are, are opening in August 2024. This is providing consultancy advisory services. There's no specific digital lot in this. That was changed, taken out in MCF3. However, there are a bunch um, of um, specialisms uh, on this one that will have the ability for, um, for digital and tech to be part of it. Cyber Essentials is required. Uh, and it's aiming to be a bit more for SME friendly this time around, but there's some quite high level stuff on the um, certificates of past performance. And if you're looking for strategy, and, I think the strategy and policy, um, then um, or complex and transformation, then that is quite limited. And they're looking at quite high rates um, for their certificates of past performance on that. This is where we're coming into where there's quite a lot of bunching in our framework. So we've never we 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 this we didn't do uh, anyone for MCF three. We did people for MCF two. We didn't think it was that um, useful for, for SMEs, frankly. MCF, uh, you know, it, there's not a lot of businesses gone through. It's all gone to the big four. So, well, a big four and associated um, providers around there. So, you know, we don't overly focus on this one, but we can provide support on it. This one, we are absolutely providing support on, and it's one of our, it's probably our second biggest, um, second or third biggest frameworks that we do. In terms of more, in terms of call offs for, 
Now, if anyone remembers, this was originally Digital Outcomes 6 and Digital Specialist and Programs um, <clears throat> when they split out of DOS 5. Now, the plan is so far is to bring it all back together, likely to be called Digital Outcomes and 7, but it's called Digital Projects and Programs on the CCS pipeline at the moment. This is looking at a September 2024 application window. Um, you know, if they're bringing in things like specialists and programs back in, um, the application is going to be more um, more streamlined, and there's there definite there's a definite desire to reduce the number of suppliers. I think it's three thousand suppliers on outcomes, um, and there will be um, higher ratings. So there's going to be more things around the insurances, certificates of past performance, all things like that. Now we think it could well come back as looking like this: outcome specialists. Um, the, 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 the three and four, the user, the, the user research stuff will stick around as normal and then likely, possibly programs. But this is only our view. This is nothing confirmed by Crown Commercial yet. So please don't hold us to this and don't hold them to it. OK, as I say, um, you know, this this is likely to follow the new procurement regs with an open framework with um, in the call off contracts. They'll be using most um uh, what's it most advantageous tender rather than the meat criteria which is most economic advantageous tender so and that's what we're expecting there um and that again will be out in september closely followed uh, by technology services four or maybe actually running and co-running at the same time again this is a key framework for suppliers we you know cannot stress the need to get onto this more if you provide these services if you're an it services firm um, and there's some big, big, big projects going through this. It's quite a competitive framework. It's got 250 SMEs, 250 um, companies on there with 50% of SMEs. There's never usually a, a cap on suppliers, but there's an awful lot of checks and compliance to me as, um, using the Procurement Act as well. Um, it's likely to be, I think, there's going to be an eight-year term for this, so three plus two plus three, as kind to be an open framework, which means they will open it at certain times um, for new entrants to apply. Um, so, and the thoughts about having a DPS, but I'm not too sure that's going to be taken up. Um, but we'll see what that one comes out. We get, we're due to have another round of market engagement next month, I believe. But this again, um, you know, potentially is going to be one of those ones that if you're not on it, you could really could be looking at losing out quite big, big time. So here's the overall timeline. So you can see October this is for 2024. There is another one called Outsource Contact Centre and Business Services, which is for mostly around the bumps on seats provision of um, contact centre. Um, that's due November 2024. Quite niche, very uh, limited number of suppliers on there. And then if you are into MFDs, print and digital, uh, you know, you can um, definitely be looking at getting onto this framework here, which is December. Um, then, as you can see, we'll move into 2025, Transport Technology and Associated Services, TTAS 2 will launch, followed by the much maligned mobile voice and data services, which was CCS taking the mobile lot out of um, tech uh, network services and putting it as its own standalone framework, basically to give the work to the um, big suppliers, a lot of the smaller suppliers that were doing um, resale of BT and or the other um, O2 and people like that have basically been moved out of that, moved out, moved out of that framework. A lot of it has gone through lot one, but you know you've got to be in it to win it. So this is also still a quite useful framework to be on if you provide mobile voice and data services. So that's running through that. Excuse me. Um, another poll, please, Danny. So we'd like to know from you, which frameworks are you looking to get onto this? So you can select more than one of the following of these, okay? It includes DCFH2, Back Office Software, MCF4, Digital Outcomes or Tech Services 4. Okay, you're up to 70% people voted, so we'll keep it open for a little bit longer. Conscious that we need time for Q&A. Get those questions in if you can, please. Couple of more minutes. Couple more minutes, couple more seconds. So, <laughs> bit of crazy day already. Okay, I think we're up to 80 percent now. Let's let's close that down then and see what the results were. Okay, let's have a quick look. 
So 30% of you looking for DCFH2, not so many on back office software, MCF4, 32%. Outcomes seven and technology services. Yeah, those are those are really really key frameworks for people to get on. That's no surprise to me there. So thanks for that. If you close that down, then we'll crack on. Okay. Yeah. So what should suppliers be doing now? How are you going to make progress on these? Okay. So I'll try to keep this as quick as possible. Um, if you've not got your pipeline ready, then you're already behind. Judging by the results there, everyone is um, certainly aware of those frameworks and where. Um, I don't know whether hopefully some of you attended our framework uh, webinar last year about what you need to get to be starting early. Um, make sure you're qualifying yourselves for each upcoming framework. And if you're unsure, we can help. Make plans for your colleagues and who needs to be working on each application window. I mean, MCF4, thank you very much. School holidays, cheers, Crown Commercial. We've uh, at least the tech service, the, te the technology team um, around those tech services and the digital teams are trying not to have things out during the Christmas and uh, you know summer and Christmas holidays. I think a lot of them have families as well. And they're getting that message now, please don't be doing that. Um, you need to consider your technical aspects, marketing, sales, pricing, the accreditation your company has, ideally Cyber Essentials and Cyber Essentials Plus, what your carbon reduction plans are, prompt payment, your financial viability, your terms and conditions, what's happening with social value making sure you're getting your certificates and past performance or technical ability ready, you know, having to ask for those to get signed during an application window is very stressful and very difficult. Um, so don't leave your accreditation to the last minute. Again, if you're looking for uh, advice on who can help stuff outside of us, like Cyber Essentials, from, um, your carbon reduction plans and social value, we have partners in our ecosystem that are truly reliable and best in class, and we can help signpost you to them. Again, market's a bit complex. Map out the routes to market you'll be joining, but what you can be doing once you're listed on them. You know, just getting getting listed on the framework is the start of the journey. There's lots of stuff you need to do once you're on there. Um, so, you know, uh, it's just really the door open of opportunities and so you're not being locked out. There's lots to do. Um, so, map out your application timelines. Make sure you've got the time to apply and the people of both. Upskill your teams about the frames before they arrive and get them on board so they know exactly what they're going to be. They need to be answering about that. Digital outcomes is very different from tech services. Um, you know, making sure you're using these, your frames to part of your public sector strategy. Is it in place for 2024? Capacity to bid. There's not a lot of inbound success. You do actually have to win the bid. So you do need to, you know, be upfront and doing the hard work at the end. And, you know, we talk about this a lot. Are you aware of your company's viability? Are there anything blocking you from doing business in the public sector? We can help you with that. <laughs> and here we are, segueing into how we can help. So we offer workshops and training, framework applications. We offer, people know we're a risk-based service, so we guarantee to get you on or you get your money back, subject to a couple of minor terms. We do go-to-market assessments, whether you, know, you should be approaching the public sector or whether it's into some new sectors. We have a procurement plus service, which is our phone a friend service to help you. You know, you're, why should you be a procurement expert? Call us, that's what we're here for. And a huge piece of our work is doing bid reviews, setting you up so that you can actually bid successfully and win those deals. And we've had some tremendous wins. We just actually got our first win off the Dallas framework, which we can't talk about because um, uh, until our client was that. But let's just say we're absolutely delighted for them. And, um, you know, it's a real absolute game changer for them. Uh, and we're delighted for them to have that. I actually have that. Here's our framework. So, you know, the proof is in the pudding, okay? I talk a lot about the great services we offer. Here's the actual evidence, okay? Here's the work that we have done over the years um, on their own. You know, there's some fantastic success rate and huge, great, great quiet client quality scores that we've got there. Um, talk about viability. If you are interested in this, we have a tool. Um, that we use to, um, to find out the key things that we find that are blockers, blockers to you doing business. Find out your viability score. It's free. It gives you some information. And if you need to, you can then book a call with us to actually talk it through. Uh, and it gives you, it's, it really gives you a decent report and some actionable, some actionable insights on things you will need to do to improve. So here you go. There's the, there's the um, QR code that you can use that to book the score or click on the, the various bits and pieces that you need to there. And this will all be in the, the, the stuff we send to you afterwards anyway. One final last poll. Well, we want to know how we found you today, how sorry, how you found this information we shared. Has it been enough? And um, please you know, let us know on, and we'll soon find out. So, you know, was it useful, very useful or not useful at all? 
70%, you voted 80%, 85%. I think we're there, Danny. Let's close that one down. We want to get the Q&A quickly. Okay, quick publish. Thank you very much. Our usual competitor that puts in not very useful at all hasn't turned up today. So thanks ever so much. I hope that's been, I hope that's, I'm really pleased with that. Um, any any feedback also, please send us it. If you close that down, we're getting to Q&A now, please. Are you there, Danny? Hello. Um, yeah. Um, so as Chris said, um, do chuck your questions in the questions box um, if you do have any. And there's some coming in already. If we don't have time to answer any, we'll type them up and send them around. Um, the first question comes in. Um, it says, are there any market outreach meetings planned for mobile voice and data yet? Can we influence the lock structure for the next round? No, I think that's a very, very excellent question. And um, one that unfortunately I'm not able to answer. I've not seen anything or heard anything yet. Um, I was quite surprised even to see network services appearing on the pipeline, but I suppose it's got to re relit, and that's for 2025, mid 2025. So keep an eye on the network services team and see. But we'll, if you sign up and let us know, then we, you know, we, on our CRM that you're interested in that framework or let us know, then we'll keep you updated. We'll, we'll actually update our CRM to make sure that you know when there's market engagements or not. Um, another question here, um, in our experience, how long does an application for one of these competitive frameworks um, usually take? Uh, it really varies. So, I mean, we do our g -Cloud applications over the course of around six weeks, um, and it takes about five working days per lot, per, per service submitted for our clients. Um, tech services, you know, these are open. Uh, the framework the application period is open usually between six to eight weeks, so you have to get in pretty quickly. Um, so you know, they're, 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 it really there's not a, a standard approach or answer to that one, I'm afraid. But you know, I would allow for G Cloud, I'd allow if you're doing it yourself, probably around 15 working days um, uh, for yourselves to do it, and you know, I think probably 25 to 30 working days for something like tech services. Nice. Um, someone has asked about um, the differences between G Cloud, the current G Cloud 13 and G Cloud 14. Um, we probably don't have enough time to go through that at the moment, but on our website, there is the webinar that we had about a month or so ago called Get Ready for G Cloud 14, which has all the information you can want on that that's in there. Um, another question here is about Technology Services 4. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever known there to be flexibility on the ISO requirements? Um, an example of that is our data centers have ISO accreditations, but we do not. Um, so, not so much. Uh, I mean, Tech Services 3, I don't think, had ISOs in it. Um, tech, now, Tech Products did have ISOs introduced. But the flexibility is that you need to align yourself with the principles of ISO and then prove how you do that. Um, uh, initially, they were saying, no, you had to actually have it. And there was a lot of to and fro and, and we got quite involved in changing that to making sure it was aligned to the principles of those ISOs. It's, it's individual. Framework. I would not rely on those not being there. Um, it's just another way for Crown Commercial to um, reduce the supply numbers, to be honest, at the moment. Cool. Um, someone asks, can uh, can micro, uh, okay, are micro startups eligible to apply for G Cloud and what are the chances of us actually winning contracts? Yes, you can apply for G Cloud. Um, you will need to um, make sure that you're well funded. Um, if you've just started up as an organisation or you're running at a huge loss, then you, you may you may struggle to pass the new financial viability rules. Um, but if you can prove if you can prove that you're well funded, even if you're loss making, um, then you should be able to get a place on there. And yes, you can win work, but bear in mind it's not a source of inbound leads. You should use that as, use your G card accreditation as the door opener by contacting various buyers within the, who are offering your who are looking to buy your services. You know. That's what you need to do a bit of market research as to the types of places that would buy your services. Do we have time for one more, Chris? One more. It's it's nearly eleven o'clock. One more, and then we'll crack on. Let everybody get on with okay. their day. Uh, as, 
as a current G Cloud supplier, how many days would you estimate we'd need to allow to get onto the new framework? Um, I'd say for a lot two submission, if you're doing it yourself, 15 working days. If you're using us, it's about five working days. We tested that with our um, with one of our clients years ago. They 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 said they they took them 15 to 20 working days, and they still didn't get on. They used us, and it took us five it took them five working days, and we've used that as the benchmark ever since, and it works out about right. Is that it? Cool. Um, yeah, yeah, that's all thank the questions you. in. Um, any you haven't answered, we'll send round the answer to. But thank you. Brilliant, Danny. Thank you very much. Uh, I wish you all the best, everybody. Please do get in touch. Um, thank you so much for for joining us today. And uh, yeah, wish you all the best with everything. And yeah, honestly, get in touch if you've got any questions or you need some help. Look forward to hearing from you. Thanks so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now.